Hello there. Today I'm bringing a review of the gear I used while doing the Scottish National Trail. But, you know, I was talking with one of my viewers and I wasn't sure what had to do it. He asked me a few questions about gear and whatnot. I've been thinking of it, how to bring this about, how to bring value for you guys. And so I decided I will approach this video in a functional way. So I want to speak about those items that excel, those items that I didn't cut it, those items that I wish I had had with me. And then I'm going to speak about a few other things that may be of your interest. So this is not just a gear review video. Point number one, these are the items that worked or did not work for me. I, I really, I cannot stress this point enough. So something that I absolutely hate maybe something you love so just remember that we're all different we hide differently we go to different places which brings me to point number two because then i have people telling me oh but why don't you use this and that look this is a gear review focus on scotland so if you go to switzerland and uh, that's great but i'm talking about the things that worked for me in scotland doing the scottish national trail and it's about going lightweight maybe not ultra lightweight but lightweight and by that i mean i was carrying anything between 12 and 15 kilos another thing i want to say is i wrote to rab because uh, i made two little holes so one hole in two of my rab jackets and so i contacted them and i thought you know what instead of asking for product support why not asking for sponsorship so yes the answer was no because I don't have enough views and I don't have enough subscribers. So I didn't get sponsorship from Rab. I just wanted them to literally replace my jackets. Just, you know, send my brand new jacket with a mini hole in it to them and they, so that they could send me a brand new jacket. But they decided that I don't have enough subscribers, so I was rejected. So just for you to know, every single item that I talk to or that I show you in this video, I paid for it. If they suck, I just tell you these things suck. And if they do great, I can say that this product did great. Obviously, it's always relative because again, something that sucks for me, you may love it. Something that sucks in Scotland may be wonderful in Switzerland. But you know, this is what it is. So the guys are rub. <laughs> Hold on to your chair because you're gonna have a hard time today. I won't let you get away with this! Thank you all for those lovely comments you wrote uh, in the Scottish National Trail video. You also, I mean, I have so many lovely comments also in the Kebrath Trail video or the SUW video. So I really appreciate that. It really encourages me because now when I go on a trail, I'm always thinking, you know what? I need to, to do a great video for these guys that are always there. I think it's Billy Crawford, always forward. That defines me, he got it. Yes, I'm always going forward. Uh, let's start with a few things I wanted to, to say before I get into gear. For example, how I pack my backpack. So what I do is, because we are in Scotland, uh, chances are it's gonna be raining when you finish your day. So you wanna have your tent, uh, just there, very easy to access and for obvious reasons. So what I do is in the very bottom, I, I put while doing the s &T, my emergency BB for the time that I had it with me and my sleeping pad. Then I put my sleeping bag in a dry bag and a thick dry bag actually, not the nano ones, but the thick ones. Um, then I put on the left side, again in a dry bag, I put my dry clothes. On the right, my puffy. In the center, I put my cooking system, basically my pot. Inside the pot, I have my mag, I have my burner, and I have my, if I have one, um, a lighter. And I also have a coffee, and if I have some milk powder, it's also there in the pot. And on top of that, I put my tent, and then on top of my tent, or around, I put the pocket that my backpack has, and in that pocket, I have easily two, three, depending on what I'm carrying, uh, zip bags, one with my electronics, by that I mean my power bank, two cables, one for the power bank, one for the phone, 
an adapter so that I can charge at the same time the power bank and the phone. If I go to a pub, for example, or a hotel, wherever I go that I can charge the phone, I have that. Then I have another bag where I have my, my medicine, like ibuprofen basically, my plasters. Yes, some of them are compete, but I've been exploring and trying different solutions for different usage and, and yeah, I was happy. So I, I suggest you trying different type of plasters. Compete are very good, but they have their application and you, you have other plasters that may help you in different situations. So just explore and try them, they're not very expensive. I put the ground sheet, if it's dry, I put it on top and uh, it also acts a little bit as a um, protection from rain that comes from the top obviously. Because I found that most of the backpacks uh, I've had and I've tried in the bottom is where the water tends to accumulate. Uh, actually I had a paddle in the bottom of my backpack when I set up camp at the Cane Gorms. So, um, that's why I also put the sleeping pad because that doesn't matter if it gets wet and it creates a little bit of it, it puts the stuff further up. So yeah, when I reach my pitching spot, all I have to do is take out the ground sheet if it's not out already because uh, I also attach it to the outside of the backpack, get my ground sheet, get my tent, and then the the poles and the pegs are on the side of the backpack. On the other side of the backpack, I have my water bottle and my water bottle carrier or whatever that's called. And yeah, that's how I pack. So then during the day, for the most part, I tend to have my hard shell attached on the outside. In, because you know, it's, it's one of these pieces of kit that are on and off. And sometimes also my mid layer, uh, it depends. If I say I'm going to have to put it back on, then it's outside, otherwise I just pack it in the dry bag, depending on the conditions. I'm also going to speak about how my days are when I'm hiking, so you get a picture. So maybe we'll start from there. So I get up usually early. When I'm on the trail, 6 a.m., early bird. And the first thing I do is think of making coffee. And that gets me going always, because <laughs> I love coffee. Whoa, I'm a bit wasted. nothing that a good cup of coffee can fix so yeah i get up i set up my thing my coffee and have my oats then i have my coffee then i change because i have two sets of clothes my hiking clothes my dry clean clothes the time that i use for packing helps me uh, know what type of clothes i should be wearing why because while you're packing and all you tend to heat up so that's a good indication for me as to what type of clothes i need if when i finish packing i feel cold then i i know that i need to add something on if i feel hot i know that i have to take something off and i think that that's a good way for you to to figure out what type of clothes you should be putting on at least at the beginning of the day because obviously things are going to change yeah, so then basically, once I'm done with packing, I hit the road and I only stop either because I, I find a very beautiful place and I may stop there to have a snack when it's like really nice or because I'm, yeah, or pretty much uh, that's it. Obviously it varies because if I go and I walk by a town, then I'm gonna have a coffee and I do enjoy myself when I'm enduring. At some point, it didn't matter if it was up or down or what I was carrying, if I had just resupplied, if I didn't. I felt like a freaking walk minator, uh, like, a, like a walking machine. I have a friend who says that I'm a machine. And I admit, lately I started to see myself as such. All I do is walk, like the Terminator, really. I have it in my mind and I don't care about anything. I just walk. Mission. Get into Cape Wrath. That's it. That's all I care. Like the Terminator, really. Like anything in between, I don't care. I just go forward and nothing's gonna stop me. When it comes to nutrition, uh, first, like I stick to my oats. I always like to have my breakfast with me because I think oats are an awesome energy. It's what the Romans used to have, the soldiers. So yeah, oats are, seem to be good. And then, uh, so my wife 
has some dry food that she dehydrated herself. So I had some of that during the SNT. So basically what I do, I have my oats in the morning, 200 grams. Then throughout the day, all I do is just, I get an uh, energy bar. Usually I have three, four per day. And then at the end of the day, I have my, my student, my wife um, uh, has done for me. And otherwise I always have um, this thing I call tortillas and I uh, add some, some dry meat that I would get in the supermarket and put it in a zip bag and so I could make sandwiches or cheese. So that's mostly what I've been having while doing, doing the SNT. But in the first week and a half, I would say, of the SNT, what I did is having my breakfast with me and my energy bars. And the rest, I pretty much just had it like it's every day I walk, uh, walked by uh, town. So what I did is have lunch there and buy some dinner. Uh, usually for dinner, I just bought this uh, means steak pies, etc. Uh, I didn't know, but in some butcheries, they sell these mince pies and steak pies and whatnot. Boy, they're super good. At least I really enjoy them. So yeah, I used to have a couple of those and then have them for dinner. So that way I carried like very minimal uh, food weight in my pack. Another thing uh, when it comes to nutrition is I read some research, it doesn't seem to be conclusive about it, it's called BCAA, Branch Chain Amino Acids, and they seem to aid with recovery. So, you know, it's something is not going to hurt, I don't think they're very expensive, so I just bought a, because I used them back in the days and all, I mean, I know that ever since I'm, I don't know, 19, 20, when I used to go to the gym and all these things, so... Yeah, I, I thought, you know what, I'm gonna have that. So at night, before I go to bed, or when I have dinner, I have a, a couple of those pills. And throughout the day, I was having like one, two, so maximum four per day. And whether that helped or not, I cannot tell you, but maybe that. So yeah, uh, I was having that. Yeah, someone asked me the other day, uh, how about the hygiene? Well, this is how I do it. Again, everyone has their own technique and whatnot, but this is how I do it. First, I carry my wet wipes. So what I do is I take one wipe usually per day and I do my underarms first with it, my genital, my butt, I flip it around and then I do the upper side of my feet and then the bottom side of my feet, one wipe. I put it away on the side of the tent where I tend to collect all my trash and the inside the tent why? Because that way you make sure things don't fly away with the wind. Then during the SNT, because it's an um, extended trail, so um, there were days that I used two wipes. It's very important that you, you keep your feet clean and you air them. Because I've seen some videos in YouTube, I just couldn't believe it. Like the guys, they, they had the feet like when, you, when you've taken a hot bath like that and you are like, man, don't you want to air your feet for the love of God? And also because if I need to apply a plaster, you want to make sure, especially with Compete, you want to make sure your feet are really well dry. And in my case, they dry off in literally one minute. So it doesn't take too long. And then finally, when it comes to hygiene, Sometimes, like every now and then, while doing the SNT, so basically if it's a hike that is gonna be longer than 10 days, what I did is just wash myself either in a river or in a water source I would find anywhere. And by washing myself, I literally mean only my genitals and my butt. That's the only thing I rinse with water and that's it. Because the feet are always uh, cleaning themselves uh, throughout the day as they get wet. And the underarm, I don't think, uh, I didn't have the need for that. I don't have a strong odor. If you have it, then you may have to use more wipes or figure something out. And then yeah, finally, time two, um, I always keep a perfume sample. So when I go back home, I always have my little sample. And again, you know, use it before I go on the plane or something. River crossings. So how I approach a river crossing. Look, I'm not an expert in any of this I'm telling you. So just take all my advice with two or more half a kilo of salt. Bear that in mind. So now what I do for river crossings, and this is really a, 
it can be very dangerous. So the best thing for the river crossing is if you don't feel confident, don't even try. Just sit down, wait it out, or just enjoy the day. Really, lose the mileage that day. The world isn't going to end. But don't do anything stupid because you're going to regret it and you can die. So let's put it just very straight. You can die. So don't do anything stupid. Now, having said that, there's always a trade-off between how hollow the river is and how wide. So usually suggested, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, because I'm here to learn as well, um, a spot that is as wide as possible. Why? Because the water uh, will, will have less strength in a wide spot. The second thing I do after um, I have determined, I think this seems to be the right spot, is with a trekking pole, I check how hollow it is. Only then I determine whether it is the right spot or not. Now, once I know these two things, what I do is I work with a one single trekking pole, I create a tripod, like think of the tripod of a camera. So here the key is what they tell you, if you were to like in Switzerland, I remember once my wife and I, we went down like pretty steep ladders and if you fell, you die, period, there was a cliff. So we were just told it has to be and I remember this because, uh, you know, back in the days, you had to do the military service uh, in Spain. So I did the military service in the Marine Corps and you had to, do, you had to go down some uh, nets. I don't know how you call it, but this thing you, you put like on the side of a, of a ship and then you go down to those um, boats that take you to, to the beach, to take a beach or something. So what they tell you is, you have to move one thing at a time. You move one hand, the other hand, one leg, the other leg. This way you always have three points uh, secure. So when it comes to the river crossing, you move one foot, you secure your foot. This is very important because first, the stones are very slippery. And second, you think you have your step secure and then the moment you put your weight in there, your foot moves and if the current is strong, you're gone because you don't have a solid stand. So while you're, you are like leaning on your, your trekking pole and your left leg, you move your right leg, you secure your step, you, you push and you feel that, that there is well secure, that the stone underneath are not going to move around. When you have it secure, only then you start leaning towards the side and then you proceed with your left uh, leg, you secure your freaking left leg before you move in your trekking pole. And once you have your two legs very well secure, you have a strong stand, then you move the trekking pole. One movement at a time and always securing every single movement. This is only important if the current is strong. The current tends to be the strongest at the center. So bear that in mind. So that's gonna help you because uh, as you get in the river, the sides near the bank it's usually weaker. I mean, it's going to be weaker for sure than the center. So as you are approaching, it's going to be telling you how strong the current is, is going to be. And so it's an indicator of whether you should just go back or keep going. Bear in mind that this changes if there are obstacles in a river, whether it's a big rock or whatever. But as a rule of thumb, the center of the river is where the current will be the strongest. It won't happen every single time, but it's a good rule of thumb. Another thing, what should you do if you get caught by the river? Well, this is one thing you need to, to have in mind and very clear before you put yourself in the river. Because if you want to think about what to do when the river gets you, it's too late. So this is what I do. I'm not saying this is what you should do. I'm, I've never read this anywhere. So you better go and inform yourself somewhere else, but I'm going to tell you what I do. The first thing I do is I find out an escape route. If the river gets you, rotate, turn around so that you can face where you're heading to. If you have an escape route, you know where you're heading to. You, you need to find your way towards your escape route. And for that, you need to turn around. Another thing that is crucial Never try to stand up in a river when it gets you. Never, because if you try to stand up when the river gets you, and that's, that, that, that may be like a fallen tree, that may be like, a, like rock stones in a way that 
your foot, your leg gets, gets trapped. That can be fatal for you. So never ever try to stand up in a river when it gets you. What you do instead, and this takes us to the, to the previous point, you just let the river get you down, never fight the current. The current is stronger than you, uh, already took you down, so it has proven that already. What you do instead, just gently, swim your way to the side of the river, and what you're doing here, like Aikido thing, <laughs> you use the strength of your enemy <laughs> to your own favor. So you're trying to swim your way to the side. The current is gonna push you down, so you can gently and gradually find your way to the side and to the bank of the river and hopefully to your escape route. So just really th know very well these things before you get into the river because otherwise you may never come out. And then finally, if you manage to get out of the river once you have been caught, and hopefully you do, you need to, one, find a shelter. If there's no freaking shelter, you, you need to just put on your dry clothes. I know maybe it's pouring down on you, but it's better than soaking wet from the river, especially if you're in the Cairngorms. The river were freaking freezing cold, so the rain won't be as cold. So it's still good. Put your dry clothes on. And I would personally try to find a bit of a shelter. But in Scotland, in the places I've seen, that's often so, so difficult. There's not cover anywhere. Now I'm going to speak about those items that excel. Uh, one of them is my chest pocket. Wow, that was brilliant, really. I recommend it to everybody. I want to write to OM, this uh, brand, I think it's British, and I want to tell them how, how well, how, yeah, how well the, the chest pocket perform. I'm going to make some suggestions to them. The suggestions are going to be, I wish the chest pocket was fully waterproof because the front, it, it took a lot of rain. I think it's water repellent, but it's not waterproof. So eventually everything inside was soaking wet. Since it's a pocket, that's not excuses for that. It could be fully waterproof and it should be fully waterproof. I understand on the back, if you want something a bit more breathable, the material, because it's, it's on your chest all day long. If it's fully waterproof, it will create like a hot spot. Because this one already created a slight hot spot, depending on what clothes you were wearing and whatnot. But boy, that thing is fantastic. I think every hiker needs the thing, really. <laughs> Why? Everything that is going to be in and out throughout the day, you have it there handy with you. Just think about it. So what did I have in my chest pocket? I have my toilet paper. I have my knife. I had these BCAA pills that I mentioned earlier, because I could have just one or two throughout the day. I had my energy bars. I would always put four energy bars the day before so that they would be there uh, for the next day, ready. I had my phone, I had my mini tripod, and my hat, my neck cater, always there. And then in and out, for example, my gloves, uh, at, at times, through, um, during the SNT, I was using some gloves, they were there. And the gloves were merino liners, so they were there. And the GPS, eventually at some point, after the cane gorms, I got a GPS device, why? Because I found myself in a position where I didn't have maps, I didn't have a GPS, I didn't know the area, and all I had is my phone, it was giving me warning messages. This is also why I stopped using it. Why? Because it was my only GPS device. So I rely on it. If I lost my GPS, my phone, then um, I would be completely screwed up. So that's why I stopped using it. Now, that taught me have a GPS device, have a, have a navigation backup, whatever you want to have, but have a backup. I've been in that situation my only navigation device was telling me I may switch off and, st and stop working. I don't want to be there again. So the next thing I did when I got out of the cane gorms and calling my wife and say, hey, expedition manager, because I used to call her like that just for fun. I want a GPS and I need it for yesterday. So she sent it right away. She just bought one, put the maps, sent it. I also have with me an emergency beacon and I strongly advise you to have one of these emergency beacons or any type of device that, that can help you or that will allow you 
call for the emergency services if you need it. Okay, so this takes me to, to gear choices. Again, this is all for Scotland. So synthetics and wool and that's it. So my puffy jacket, uh, um, no, no more puffy jackets. Why? Because if for some reason it gets wet, you screw up. And I don't care if it's a treated goose or whatever, synthetic. Make sure you have something now, if you need it, if it's wet, soaking wet, it will still create some heat. It may be uncomfortable for you, but an uncomfortable soaking wet synthetic versus an uncomfortable soaking wet goose down treated jacket, I take the synthetic over the jacket because I know it's gonna retain, because it doesn't create it, it's gonna retain more heat than the down jacket. In my experience, what the down jacket does is actually take your heat to sort of dry off. So it's really a bad solution. And if it's wet, uh, in my experience, the best thing is not to wear it. Just to, to stay away from the bloody um, soaking wet goose down jacket. Just stay away from it because it's going to take your heat. The synthetic will retain some heat. And that takes us to wool, uh, which I have had with me. A wool, thicker wool mid layer instead i had this thing i'm going to show you so <clears throat> instead of having a wool mid layer and this arterix mid layer this thing is on top of like like helping me explain what i wish i had had it's also one of the items that failed me it took forever to dry off compared to my wool i mean the wool products they dry off like nothing and even when they're wet you put it on and it feels like dry uh speaking of that the socks my maroon wool socks, fantastic. Uh, crossing a river, two minutes later, all the water is out, the, the feet feel good, it didn't feel super freezing because boy, the, the water in the river is freezing cold. The wool socks are fantastic, really. And anything wool is amazing. So this thing, never again. I personally think this is a very bad uh, piece of gear, unfortunately. So yeah, I'm going back to the items that excel. I have a list here with me. So I said the chest pocket, the sitting pad. I absolutely loved my sitting pad. I use it extensively. I use it to sit down everywhere I sat down. I use it also whenever I had a coffee break in a bothy, I would put it on the floor because usually the floor in a bothy is, is pretty freezing. So sitting pad and that was fantastic. I use it in the tent every single time to do my coffee and it's just really, really fantastic. And it's seriously, I think I paid 650, 750 pounds. Really good piece of kit. By the way, uh, the sitting pad, I put it on the back of my backpack, like the part of the backpack that is against my back, just put it there. So it was always easy to, to access. So and, and whenever I stop, I could reach it easily. The ground sheet, that was fantastic. Um, I absolutely loved it when I, my wife and I brought it for the CWT. That was my wife actually, that she pushed for it. Ah, I'm going to take it. And she did carry the ground sheet. And then I realized how, like what an amazing piece of kit to have with you, a ground sheet, a good one. So it's good because first, uh, most of these uh, light tents have a bathtub that they call the, the ground of the tent. Is a is thing. So when you have the the ground sheet, it really helps with not only for protecting the ground sheet, but mostly, which is what what I care about, to keep the water, the humidity, and whatnot out of the tent. And what I really really like about the ground sheet is I put the thing first, I lie down on it, and then I check whether there's gonna be bumps or if I missed a stone here and there. So you can easily remove your ground sheet. And only when you know, because I'm very picky for this, it's flat, it's as level as possible, there are no bumps and whatnot. Only then I put the tent. So if only for this, it's already worth it. Then uh, the shoes, my trail running shoes, they really excel, uh, they're fantastic. I really recommend them. The, the sort of downside is just when you go down the hill with specific terrain, when it, there's a lot of wet uh, grass and a specific type of grass, then they don't have the best grip, let's face it. 
um, you know, that occur like five percent of the time. The rest of the time, they're pretty reliable when it comes to grip. I, I love them, and I, I really recommend them. Oh, yeah, one one note that I was gonna forget. For the shoes, I went half a size up. So because of the canal section destroyed the outsole of my shoes, I had to buy a new pair, and I, I bought them half a size up, and that's great. Like uh, if you do the SNT. I would I would say go half a size up because your feet will will swollen because of the walking every day and non-stop. So half a size up is a good uh, suggestion I would say. The tent took all the rain in the world and pretty strong winds, uh, especially one night near the Clooney Inn. There were like pretty strong winds. Thanks God I had put the tent in one of the only pitching spots anyway. But there was a bit of uh, cover, uh, if you can see it in the video. Um, but you know, uh, in the SUW it took pretty strong winds too. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with the tent. The only thing is, yeah, the pitching the inner first is annoying. And the whole pitching system is a bit cumbersome. Um, let's face it, this type of tent with the poles and whatnot, it's a bit annoying as opposed to other type of tents. But it has its advantages, so, you know, I, I don't count it as a negative because there are other places where you can set up the tent and if it's not raining, you don't even need the rain fly, you don't need the pegs, and it's an advantage. So, yeah, it's just picking up your trade-offs, as always. The backpack. I absolutely love the backpack. I know it's been from I hate the backpack to I love the backpack. But again, the only thing I did wrong in the SUW, and it was a new mistake, I just put too much weight in a backpack that is a lightweight backpack, 1170 grams. So now that I'm carrying 12, 15, I think I, I would be still fine with 17 kilos. But yeah, in the SUW, I carried 20, 22 and a half. I have a mammut backpack. I've been carrying 30 kilos in a mammut backpack and it just carries the weight better than this one, period. Now, if you put 15 kilos, this one makes you feel so free, especially your arms. You have so much freedom. You wouldn't believe it until you try this backpack. Whereas a mammut and the other backpack from Deuter that I, that I have, you feel restricted or constricted. And so it's a super comfortable, awesome backpack. So yeah, I would strongly recommend the backpack if you wanna if you're going to be carrying from 12 to 15 kilos. I think you'll love it. Then the, there's these straps on the outside. You can attach all the things you want. It's just so functional. It's it's really an expedition backpack. I really really love it, and I strongly recommend it. Then there's the bottle of water from a smoothie. So it has a larger opening and it, it just did greatly. Fantastic bottle, weights nothing. And because as you know from my other gear review, I ditched my Nalgene bottles because one liter bottle weights 170, 180 grams. So that's crazy. It's just fantastic. It's great for collecting water because the opening is pretty big. It's great if you need to use it as your number one bottle during the night. By the way, if you have to do that and it's cold, you close it, then your wee is going to be hot. And then you put it in the sleeping bag and it's heating up the sleeping bag. I think it's a great solution. So that's that. Yeah. So all the Merino clothes, again, they excel. They're fantastic and I strongly recommend them. They don't have to be this brand that I always buy. It can be any other brand as long as it's wool. It's great. I think the only difference between some wool and other, other brands wool or not, it's obviously the fit, the way it's been cut and um, how itchy it is, depending on how the wool is being treated, I guess, or whatever. Um, it can be a bit itchy. So yeah, it just, just try, try different brands and find the one that, that does it for you. But I strongly recommend wool. It's a fantastic material, really. It doesn't pick up odor, not as much as synthetic by any means. 
Um, it keeps you very warm, like seriously, it's incredible when it's completely soaking wet. If it's completely soaking wet and you just squeeze it a bit and rinse it, uh, it just uh, get off the water very easily and you put it back on and it feels dry. It's humid, but it feels dry. It's incredible. Uh, seriously, if you haven't had any wool um, garment, just get one, start from the socks and you'll love it. Seriously. And, and also breathes very well. My socks, the, this one for spear fishing, they prove to be amazing. Not only I use them as camp shoes and they only weigh I think they weigh 100, 104 grams. So they were great as camp shoes, but they were also fantastic for hiking. And yes, this time I used them extensively because I wanted to test them. And the moment I tried them one day while hiking, um, for the days that was, um, that was gonna be all day raining and super wet and river crossings, I put them on, I loved them. The only problem is, when I hike in them, obviously that would be soaking wet at the end of the day, so I couldn't use them for camp. But you know, that was the only trade-off. They're super camp for the board, because they're thick. You need to try them. They're pretty cheap, I would say, like 15 pounds. And you need to try them for yourself in wet conditions and just try for yourself, compare them to a, a, a pair of wool socks and draw your own conclusions. But I strongly recommend them. I love them actually for hiking as well, so I think they're amazing. I'm very happy with the head torch I have. I use it also for hiking this time, and it's just amazing. It, it doesn't move, it stays where you put it, not only in the angle, but also in your head, at least on my head, maybe your head, your head is different, like we always say. And yeah, I was very, very happy with my, with my head torch. So guys, just for you to know, I just engaged the Duracell pace um, if you're wondering, uh, like, kind of what you mean, you mean the Terminator pace because you're not stopping. Yeah, no, the difference is, it's true with the Terminator pace, you never stop no matter what. It's just a slow. Terminator pace is slow. So for that, if you need to speed up like me, and you need to, to cut through this uh, canal and get it done real quick. Whoa, that's a train there. If you need to get like a massive or a big big mileage done real quick then you engage the Duracell pace so you don't stop no matter what but you also cruise through it's uh, the combination then another item that I excel is the my cooking system in general my ultra lightweight this titanium pot fantastic the pocket rocket from MSR great it just really it, it keeps amazing me how it always um, fires up at the first time. I never had to click the igniter twice. It's incredible, really. It's just so minimalistic, it's lightweight, it's easy to set up, it's just all advantages. The only thing is, it's unstable and it won't take the wind as the other more wind resistant uh, burners. I have one of those. Yeah, another item I'm really happy is the, these uh, dry bags from Sea to Summit, but those that are thicker, I have one here to show you, because they're the nano ones, um, but these are a little bit thicker. I guess I'll put the name because you cannot tell on the phone, like on the video, but yeah, the thicker ones for the sleeping bag and for your puffy, and um, again, remember, just bring a synthetic jacket, but to Scotland, um, but I mean, you can, you can get away with your goose like I did, it's just a, it's a risk that you're taking because even if, if you keep it in your dry bag, which I did, and it was like bone dry, when, whenever I had to use my jackets, they were always bone dry, but the environment is damp and you feel it. It's just the jacket doesn't loft. It start like sort of shrinking, you feel it. You feel the jacket struggling. <laughs> I'm not kidding you. When it's very humid, you feel it. So seriously, I don't think there's any need to to have a goose down jacket, I would personally go for the synthetic. It's just safer in every single way. And if it's very humid in the environment, it will not be damp. So I, st I think it's the best uh, solution. These gloves are fantastic, really. I use them every day, all day long. If you buy them, they'll grow on you, I promise you. And I was about to forget the star of my collection, the sponge, this is a real must. Another item that failed me, it didn't fail me. Look, 
I'm talking about the other trousers from Bear House. I love it in every single way. It's pretty good at doing the job, like keeping the rain out. It's not very super breathable, but it has this zip that you can do up and put it in a way that is open like half your leg and the other half leg. So it's really great for days that that's an on and off rain, as I've said in other gear reviews videos. But the thing I found during the SNT, because I use it more extensively, is that boy the the zip they, they keep tangling and it's freaking annoying. So if you if you have to use it more extensively, you you will get annoyed with the freaking zippers to the point that at some point I had to cross a river, the thing got tangled, I didn't have time for the thing, the weather was really bad, it was getting worse, and I just pulled the damn thing and I broke it. And Amazon replaced it for me, so I have a new one now, no problem. But um, I just didn't have time for the freaking zip uh, tangling in a moment that I just had to keep going. So it really annoyed me, I got so upset with the freaking thing. And you can see in the video, um, on my right uh, side um, is always open because the zip broke. Um, at some point, at, towards the end of the video, you can see me walking, you can see one leg is open, the other one is closed. It's because it got broken. Another item that I missed, I uh, have had a sleeping pad. Um, either you take the one I have, but the winter version, I haven't tried it myself, but I guess that will do it. Or then you need to have a second sleeping bag, like uh, these closed cell pads, like I did in the SUW. I was missing that because even wearing everything, like my wife's sleeping bag, my puffy, everything. Just the cold, the humidity coming from the ground, man, in every place I camp, it, it was really intense. So I wish I had had this one too. So not only for sleeping, but also for the other things that you do while you are at camp, like if you stretch at night, when you're cooking, this thing is just really comfy. You arrive, you put it there, and then you can lie on it, you can do everything you want, and only when you're going to sleep, then you inflate the, the other sleeping pad. And I think the combination of these two would have been fantastic. It's just a bit annoying carrying this thing on the outside of the backpack. That's why I'm saying that maybe having the winter version can be better. I think price-wise, the winter version is just slightly pricier than the other one. So maybe if you are shopping for one, you want to look for, for a winter one. And if you go in summer, either you take a, something like this or you take your winter one. I don't think it will kill you. It's not going to be so much hotter for summer. But I think in winter, it will make a difference. So, and then you don't have to take one of these and combine them and whatnot. So I will do that for sure. I think I've covered everything. And if I've missed something, feel free to write down in the comment section down below and let me know. And you know, um, I always reply, so I'll get back to you. So I hope this video was informative. But yeah, thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye.